Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cohen back here again today with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the Phoenix Suns. They just had their season end in the second round after getting blown out by around 30 points on their home court for the second year in a row, this time to the Denver Nuggets, who are a really, really good team. And there's no shame in losing to them, especially when Nikola Jokic is averaging a 30-point triple-double the entire series and looks outright unstoppable. Jamal Murray was amazing, too. This is just probably the best team left in the playoffs right now in the Denver Nuggets. But Phoenix did have championship aspirations, especially when they added Kevin Durant in probably the biggest trade deadline move of all time. Many people predicted them to do exactly that, win an NBA championship, but we don't typically see these squads that make these big time superstar type acquisitions at the trade deadline really compete for championships in the first season. I can't think of a team that won the title after trading for a superstar at the deadline that same year. It just, nothing's coming to mind. Maybe I'm forgetting about something. Let me know in the comments. But typically we see those squads that make those big time blockbuster moves at the deadline really improve the next season. That's when they truly start to compete for a championship after they've had a full off season to revamp the roster on the new acquisition and make any other necessary changes. And I think the Suns have a real chance to do exactly this. If they have a great off season, they make the right adjustments, acquisitions, they could potentially come into next year as the championship favorites. Now, this series did expose a lot of flaws with this roster, many of which still exist from last season when they got blown up by the Dallas Mavericks. But hopefully now that they've seen what has happened two years in a row, they know what some of those flaws are and they can better address them. They also do have a couple of massive positives. Of course, those two big positives mainly are Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. D-Book in particular had an incredible playoff run, probably playing the best basketball of his entire career. He entered the top 10 conversation in a lot of people's eyes. He was amazing offensively, putting up efficient 30 and 40 pieces left and right, like he also did in the regular season. His playmaking is great. His defense is the best it's ever been. He's become a really well-rounded star for this team. In fact, a lot of people have started to call him a superstar, saying that, hey, this is a top 10 guy. He's the best shooting guard in the league. And I think he has the chance to be like this borderline, maybe even bona fide top 10 player for years to come. He's under contract for a long time. He's just now entering his prime at 27 years old next season, which is kind of crazy. It feels like Booker has been in the league for like 30 years at this point, but he's just 27 years old. And this is typically when most players enter their prime. So Devin Booker is probably just going to keep leveling up, especially now that he has the biggest help of his career alongside him in the form of Kevin Durant. I think he's going to be a top 10 player for years to come in the Suns, have him under contract till 2028. So there's no rush to get this thing right. Although I'm sure they feel a bit of pressure because of course, Kevin Durant is getting older, but they can feel a bit comfortable knowing that, Hey, we have Devin Booker for a while. He's just now entering his prime. He's probably only going to get better from here. And that is a massive plus for the Suns situation. Of course, it's just a matter of getting Devin Booker the help that he needs to get this team over the hump to an NBA title. And I think they took a big step towards getting him the help that he needs by trading for Kevin Durant at the deadline. Now, this is probably a no-brainer that, yeah, Kevin Durant's going to help, but I've seen a lot of takes on the timeline over the past 24 hours or so since the Suns lost that the Kevin Durant trade was a massive mistake, that Phoenix should have kept building around Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, and that kind of young group with those two, DeAndre and Devin Booker, except for the fact that this team kind of felt stuck in the mud. They felt like they had kind of peaked last season where they won a franchise record number of games the year before they made the NBA Finals. This season, it felt like they were really taking some hits. And with Chris Paul getting older, it was clear that to me, at least, that the Suns had to make some type of big move to keep that championship window open. And I think that's exactly what the Kevin Durant trade does. Now, I will admit that KD didn't have his best playoff run this year, but I do think that part of that is the fact that he's played less than 20 games up to this point with the Phoenix Suns. I think it's right around 20 actually he played eight in the regular season he played five against the Clippers six now so yeah it's at 19 games that he's played as a Phoenix Sun it's not a lot of time to build chemistry with your teammates to kind of learn the system and get comfortable with what's going on over there in Phoenix especially when you consider the fact that the supporting cast around Booker and Kevin Durant was not great so I think that once you get Book and KD some really solid supporting players you give them a full offseason to build chemistry learn how to play alongside each other and they have a full regular season next year I think heading into the 2024 playoffs at that point, the duo will look a lot better. In particular, I think KD will look more like the Kevin Durant that we're used to. And if Devin Booker plays at the level that he did in these playoffs next year, they're going to be really scary, even if it's just those two. All in all, I expect Devin Booker and Kevin Durant to be one of the best duos in the league for years to come, as long as they can stay healthy. In particular, with Kevin Durant, who's dealt with a lot of injuries over these past few years, he's getting a lot older. I think he's heading into his year 35 season, I believe. 
Hopefully he's able to stay healthier. Maybe Devin Booker can take some of that pressure off of him. Maybe get a little bit more into load managing with him this upcoming season. But if they're able to stay healthy, this is an elite duo. And so having two of the best players in the league, two arguably top 10 guys on your roster, is a massive positive. I don't think you need me to tell you that. But I do feel like people are getting a little bit reactionary and saying that Phoenix's title window is closed and it's all over for this team because they do still have these two superstar level players. As long as Phoenix has them, they'll probably be pretty good next season. But of course, the goal isn't to be a pretty good team. It's to win an NBA Finals. And that's where we get into the many number of things that Phoenix is going to have to fix outside of Book and KD. I think it's clear to everybody at this point that the Suns have a big issue with their depth. Now, this was already an issue coming into the season prior to the Kevin Durant trade because the Suns just did not have a lot of reliable bench contributors, really a lot of reliable contributors anywhere outside of Chris Paul and Devin Booker last season. You also had the problem of Jay Crowder flat refusing to play coming into this season because he didn't want to play off the bench behind Cam Johnson, so you lost him as well. It was just a big issue the entire year, and of course, the depth got even worse when they traded for Kevin Durant. This trade consisted of them giving up McKay. Bridges, Jay Crowder, and Cam Johnson in exchange for Kevin Durant and TJ Warren. Now, technically, this is a two-for-two two swap, Katie and TJ Warren, for McHale and Cam Johnson because Jay Crowder wasn't playing for you anyways, but Warren really never found a role as a consistent guy in this rotation, especially because his offense was not nearly consistent enough to offset his terrible defense, and so having this depth issue already existing and now losing another depth piece, bringing Kevin Durant in exchange for two guys who are a critical part of your rotation, the Suns had to rely a lot on guys down the stretch of the season, and really this entire year, like Josh Okogie, Torrey Craig, Landry Shamit, Terrence Ross, Bismack Biyombo, and Jock Landale, who all have potential to be rotational guys, but these aren't players that you should be heavily relying on if you want to win a championship. You need more consistent, solid, all-around role players if you want to be a title contending team. It also didn't help either that Cameron Payne, who's probably the most consistent player on Phoenix's bench, although he is not really that consistent either, he missed a lot of the season with injury. So they didn't have a consistent backup guard, and I do think they should probably upgrade that position anyways. But missing him in addition to not having a lot of depth, losing more depth at the deadline, this Suns team just really struggled to ever find consistent play outside of Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, and that is something that they're immediately going to have to address this offseason. They've got to find guys that can both defend and also take the pressure off of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker so that defenses can't just absolutely lock in on them at any one point. But there are a couple of problems to the Suns filling out the roster with guys like that. Number one, those are the most highly coveted players in the league, guys that can knock down outside shots and also defend. It's a luxury in today's league. Every team wants those guys. So if you want to try and pick up players like that in free agency, you're going to have to have some money to throw their way. However, the Suns have pretty much all their cap space tied up in Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, and Chris Paul. Those two last guys we'll talk about in a little bit. So they're not in a good position to bring in anybody in free agency. It's also just not a great free agent class, even if they were able to clear up some money. There are certainly some solid role players out there, and maybe Phoenix can convince some of those guys to take a discount to try and come compete for a championship in Phoenix. But it's going to be hard to really fill out the roster with those high-level players across the board, especially because you really don't have many to start with at this point. So you're going to have to pretty much build from the ground up. Otherwise, you could try and pursue these players in a trade, but the big issue there is Phoenix doesn't have really any assets. They gave all of them up to Brooklyn in terms of first round picks to bring in Kevin Durant. So making deals for these high level impact players without first round picks, it's really difficult in today's league to do anything like that. They're going to have to use their money and roster spots really wisely this offseason because they don't have many assets whatsoever at their disposal. But they have to bring guys in to improve this roster. It's just not good enough at this point. And also, pretty much everybody is probably going to be gone this offseason, mainly because a lot of them just do not contribute to this team in the way that they need. But also because outside of their core four guys, Cameron Payne and Landry Shamit, Everyone else on this roster is expiring, so they're having a mass exodus of guys on this roster. They've got to fill those guys' spots. They have to do it with competent role players, and they have to do all of that with very little draft capital whatsoever and very limited cap space. So all in all, it's probably going to be really difficult to truly make this team into the squad that the Phoenix Suns envision it as. However, there still is another way that the Suns can improve this roster pretty drastically, and I think it's a route that the Suns probably will and should end up exploring. 
That, of course, is trading one of their stars for maybe two or three role players who better complement Devin Booker and Kevin Durant than that guy that they traded away. And, of course, like I said, they're not going to trade KD or Book, so that leaves Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton potentially on the trade block. Let's start with DeAndre Ayton, who has been a Phoenix Sun his entire career since he was drafted back at number one overall in the Stack 2018 draft class. And since that moment, he's had some really solid moments as the Phoenix Sun. I mean, in their 2021 finals run, he was a super big piece as to why they got as far as they did. And following that finals run, it felt like he would probably be a Phoenix Sun for a while. However, just a couple years later, and it feels like his time in Arizona has probably run its course. Following their exit to the Mavericks last year, there were a lot of rumors that Aiton was not happy with his role in Phoenix, that Monty Williams wasn't his biggest fan, rumors that seemed to be confirmed as true when Aiton tried to leave in the offseason by signing a restricted free agent deal with the Indiana Pacers, which the Suns would end up matching because they couldn't let him walk for nothing, even though they tried to trade him multiple times throughout the offseason, in particular for Kevin Durant, who they would end up getting later on. But despite the two sides coming back together, rumors kept circulating that both sides were unhappy with the part. Partnership. Aiton looked miserable at media day. There were moments throughout this season where it seemed like he was kind of disengaged, like he didn't want to be there. There was a moment in these playoffs, I think it was game five, where the Suns were in a huddle and DeAndre Aiton left it. He just like was yelling or talking with someone and he just straight up left the huddle and sat on the end of the bench by himself. It's been a reoccurring theme with DeAndre Aiton where it feels like there's some kind of disconnect between what he wants and what Phoenix wants for him. And this all comes on top of the fact that DeAndre Aiton has probably not met expectations for a lot of people in that Suns organization. He hasn't improved a ton since his first few seasons. He hasn't been an all-star. And like I said earlier, there seems to be a lot of times where he's disinterested and disengaged, not really showing much physicality or effort, which is not what you want to see from your starting center. It feels like there still is potential in him and that he can be a lot better than he has shown so far in his career. And there's a good chance that he can. I mean, he's only 24 years old, but I'm starting to think, and I think a lot of people have realized this at this point, that if he is going to ever meet that potential, it's probably going to have to be in another environment. So my opinion, it does feel pretty likely that Aiton has played his last game as a Phoenix Sun. I think he'll probably get dealt in this offseason, whether it's in a two-for-one deal where the Suns bring in a couple of role players and maybe add a pick to try and recoup some of the assets they gave up for Kevin Durant, or maybe it's a one-for-one swap. Perhaps there's a center out there that kind of fits the mold that they're looking for, and a team would be willing to swap them for DeAndre Ayton, maybe involving a pick or two on one of the sides. I think a center that is ideal for Phoenix is someone who's a bit more physical, defensive-minded, who can give them some rim protection, and also, you know, stretch the floor a little bit. They don't even have to be like a lights-out three point shooter. I think they just need to be able to pop out a little bit to give Devin Booker and Kevin Durant space to work in the mid-range area or inside if they want to. Obviously, I think a name that a lot of people are going to bring up is Miles Turner, who's kind of been in trade rumors for a while at this point. But I'm starting to think Indiana probably wants to keep him. Although I will say, Aiton did have interest, of course, from the Pacers this past offseason when they tried to sign him to that restricted free agent deal. So maybe Indiana is still interested in DeAndre Aiton. They want to bring him in. So they'd be willing to do a Miles Turner for Aiton swap. But in my opinion, I think that ship has probably sailed. I think Miles Turner is just the better player at this point, even if he is a bit older. I've seen a lot of people suggest a Kyrie Irving deal with Dallas, where Kyrie doesn't want to go back and play for the Mavericks. He wants to team up again with Kevin Durant if KD is willing to do that experiment once again. And so maybe Dallas says, okay, hey, we can get Luka a potential high-level big. He still has some potential. So we go ahead and do a signing trade. Really, I feel like it all just depends on what Aiton's actual value is, because while he is a former number one overall pick that's 24 years old, he's also making $30 million for the next like four or five years at this point. And he has shown some issues. Like I mentioned, he really hasn't developed a consistent outside shot. The rim protection leaves a bit to be desired. There's all those effort issues. He can be a really good player, I think, but at this point, he just kind of hasn't shown the willingness to continue to work to get better and reach that true potential. Probably a bit worrying for any team trying to trade for him. I do think he still has value. It's just a matter of how much. Then there's Chris Paul, who I've seen a lot of people talk about the Suns trading ever since Game 6 wrapped up. And I think this makes a lot of sense why there's a conversation around him being dealt. CP3 is 38 years old, and he showed a lot of regression this season after being really damn good last year. His jumper has declined. The defense really isn't there anymore whatsoever. His health continues to be a recurring concern. Really, the only thing that hasn't gotten pretty rough at this point is his playmaking. He's still a really good playmaker. And I do think CP3 could still be a solid contributor, maybe in more of a bench role like Kyle Lowry is over there in Miami at the moment. 
but I think his time as a star starting point guard is pretty much over, and I think most of you would agree. So it makes sense for Phoenix to go ahead and move on, whether that's bringing in two role players to put around Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, or trading him straight up for a new starting point guard. However, there are a couple of big problems with a potential CP3 trade. Number one, he doesn't have much value. He's rapidly regressing and he's 38 years old. And two, he's making about $30 million the next couple of seasons. Now, it's not all guaranteed money. I believe it's June 28th when his contract becomes fully guaranteed, meaning that if they trade him before then, a team that takes him on could probably waive him and they would eat a lot less money from that potential waiving, which ultimately could be the saving grace for the Suns if they're trying to move him. But it still is a lot to handle for a team. And they're probably going to demand assets to take on that Chris Paul contract, especially when Phoenix is probably going to be asking for some type of high-level contributors in exchange for him, because that's ultimately the goal, is for Phoenix to try and find ways to get better by trading him. If they're not going to get better, if they're not going to get a high-level player and they've got to give up assets to get rid of him, they probably just won't trade him. And he might be back next season in kind of a bench role, like, as I mentioned, a Kyle Lowry type player. And I do think he could be good in that role, but ultimately it probably is best for Phoenix to somehow find a way to move him. I just think it's going to be really difficult. Now, one name that has been mentioned in rumors over the past 24 hours is Terry Rozier from the Charlotte Hornets. Maybe Charlotte is looking to move on from him. They're willing to take on Chris Paul's contract in exchange for an asset or two, except for the fact that once again, the Suns don't have many draft picks because they gave them all up for Kevin Durant. It's just kind of a mess. I think they'll probably find a way to trade CP3 eventually, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if he's still in this roster next season because of all the complications with a deal. So you've got Aiton and Chris Paul in the trade block, and pretty much everybody else is a free agent this upcoming offseason. It's going to be a wildly different team heading into next year, and I'm really excited to see how they try and maneuver this roster to make it as good as possible. And the changes may not stop with the roster. Monty Williams has been coaching the Suns for a few years now and has had some pretty solid success. They went to an NBA Finals and last year set a franchise record for number of wins in a regular season. But these past couple of playoff exits have been really rough, especially losing by near 30 points the past couple of years in elimination games in the second round at home. Now, this year isn't as bad because the Denver Nuggets were clearly better, but the year before was completely embarrassing, losing to the Mavericks like that. Again, after setting a franchise record number of wins in the regular season, you probably were the better team, yet you still got embarrassed on your home court in game seven of the second round. And when you put the Nuggets loss now on top of that, it's not a good look for the Suns to go out that sad in the playoffs these past couple of years back to back. I honestly would not be surprised if Monty Williams ends up getting fired this offseason as part of this team overhaul, although I do think it's probably more likely that he's retained heading into next season to keep some of that continuity from this year. But at the same time, there are some good coaching options out there in the market. And after again, going out the way that they did the past couple of playoff runs, I'm just saying it wouldn't shock me if Monty Williams isn't at the helm as a head coach this next season. Overall, I think the Suns will probably be pretty good next year after a full offseason to reshape the roster around Booker and Kevin Durant, with those two also building some chemistry in the offseason. However, if they want to be real contenders, they've got to get a lot of things right in these coming months, and they may only have this one chance to do so. They have to find the right DeAndre Ayton deal. They've got to figure out what to do with Chris Paul. They have to find a way to build a strong roster despite limited assets and a ton of likely departures. And they have to evaluate if Monty Williams is the right head coach to lead them forward. I expect them to be really aggressive this offseason, especially with a new owner in town, as new owners typically try to make big-time blockbuster moves the second they come into the position. I mean, that's evident by the Kevin Durant trade at the deadline. The second the new owner came in, he said, okay, we're going to add Kevin Durant and make potentially the biggest trade deadline deal of all time. I don't think he's done yet. I think he's going to try and make some splashes in the offseason. He does seem really passionate about bringing a title to Phoenix, and ultimately, that is the goal for this team. I expect him in the front office to make some significant moves that probably have the Suns towards the top of the Western Conference next season. But at the same time, it's going to be really hard to fill all the holes and make all the right decisions in what is one of the most important off-seasons and probably all of Phoenix Suns history. With all that being said, I appreciate y'all watching. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. Also, comment down below. Let me know what you would do if you were in the Phoenix Suns front office position. What Chris Paul trade would you look for? Who would you trade DeAndre Ayton for? Would you keep or fire Monty Williams? What role players would you try and bring in around these guys? Let me know what your game plan is down in the comments because I think Phoenix is by far one of the most interesting situations going into the offseason in the entire league. 
I appreciate y'all watching again. Thank you so much for all the support that you've shown in the channel recently. It's been amazing. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.